Almost one third of the chemical reactions taking place around us are some form of oxidation and reduction reactions. So what are oxidation and reduction reactions and where do we find them? In the 1700s, the word oxidation originally meant a reaction with oxygen, where oxygen was added to a compound. This was because oxygen was the first known oxidizing agent. However, the definition of oxidation has become more general these days, including other types of reactions. In modern chemistry, oxidation means the loss of electrons during a reaction, and it doesn't necessarily involve oxygen. The opposite process of oxidation is called a reduction. The word reduction originally meant removal of oxygen. But in modern chemistry, once again, it means gain of electrons during a reaction. In a chemical reaction, one species loses electrons as the other species gains electrons. Therefore, oxidation and reduction reactions take place altogether. That's why oxidation and reduction reactions are simply referred to as redox reactions. Oxidation? Reduction? Electrons? What? Are you confused? Let's just remember the acronym LEO the Lion GER. What this stands for is loss of electrons is oxidation and gain of electrons is reduction. Or you can remember it as oil rig, which stands for oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. That is loss and gain of electrons, of course. Now, where do we find oxidation and reduction reactions in everyday life? Number five, combustion. Burning wood in the fireplace, burning coal, fireworks, lighting a matchstick, these are typical examples of combustion. Combustion is a redox reaction where a compound being burnt is oxidized and oxygen in the air is reduced. Combustion reaction is also used to fuel the space shuttle. The fuel tank of the space shuttle contains super cold liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in separate compartments. When they are mixed and burnt, they form water and release enormous amounts of energy. Talking about space shuttles, do you know what happened to the space shuttle Challenger? It was in January 1986, the space shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds after launch, killing all seven crew members. Well, what caused this disaster? One investigation concluded that due to an unusually cold weather that morning, a rubber seal in the shuttle's booster rockets became stiff. This allowed superheated gas to escape and burn through the external tank. The external tank collapsed, spilling liquid hydrogen and oxygen inside. As you can imagine, mixing liquid hydrogen and oxygen created the huge fireball. This was a combustion reaction horribly gone wrong. Number four, corrosion. Another classical example of oxidation is corrosion. Corrosion is a process where metals are eaten up gradually by the oxygen in the air. In a way, corrosion is a very slow combustion. Most metals react with oxygen to form oxides. The oxide of iron is commonly known as rust. In this reaction, oxygen gets reduced while iron gets oxidized. Number three, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the most common everyday chemical reaction. It takes place in the green leaves of the plants to convert water and carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. The plants use glucose as fuel or food. We breathe oxygen that the plants release into the air. And in this reaction, water is oxidized and carbon dioxide is reduced. Number two, battery. From flashlights to mobile phones, batteries are indispensable in everyday life. Batteries have two electrodes and an electrolyte in between them. Alkaline batteries such as Duracell uses zinc as the anode and manganese dioxide as the cathode. When you switch your flashlight on, zinc gives up two of its electrons, leaving zinc ions behind at the anode. It is an oxidation reaction. The electrons pass through the flashlight, turning the lights on. Then they re-enter the battery at the cathode. These electrons combine with manganese dioxide to form manganese oxide. It is a reduction reaction. To carry back electrons from the cathode to the anode inside the battery, charged ions flow through an electrolyte solution between the electrodes. This completes the circuit and powers your flashlight. Number one, digestion. Digestion, who would have thought? 
Well, food molecules such as glucose, for example, react with oxygen in the body and break down into carbon dioxide and water. Energy is released in this process, which keeps us alive and grow. This oxygen glucose reaction is slow at ambient temperatures outside the living cell, but it happens fast in the body with the help of enzymes. Well, that's it for today. If you learned something new today, give this video a like, share it with your friends, and smash that subscribe button. Thanks so much.